Hello all, it's the Sivart again, and I'm here with another basics tutorial. Um, because my last one seemed to be really liked, everybody seemed to like it, and because it's so easy to make, I decided to make another one. Now, the suggestion I got was to make an FPS one. Now, I know I've done this before, but not as in detailed as some people would like. So here we go. I'm going to hopefully make a long, nice and detailed tutorial on how to make an FPS. Once again, we'll be starting from scratch, so here we'll make an object called obj. Once again, in the creation event, we're going to go into control, add some code, and type in d3d start. Just to start off. Now also, we're going to need to initialize a variable here. It's not going to do anything yet, we're just going to initialize it. So it's going to call zdir, and we're going to make it equal zero. Because in this case, this, this variable is not a global variable that gets created with the game automatically. This is one you need to initialize at the beginning of the game so that you can use it later on. So also, I will freeze the mouse in the middle of the screen. This is a, is a really cool um, technique. This is how we're going to do the FPS type thing with the mouse so that we can move the mouse around. So it's display. There we go. So now I'm just going to scroll down here. Mouse set. So this will freeze the mouse in the middle of the room. Well, all I have to do is add the X and Y here. So this is where it'll try to freeze the mouse. So I'm just going to go mm -hmm. display get. All right. No. Display mouse get X. There we go. Nope. 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 <laughs> display get width. Okay. There we go. So this will get the width of the entire screen of the user. So this means it'll be in the middle of the screen, which is what we want. So then divided by 2. There we go. That's just a bit of math there. That'll divide the entire screen width by 2. So pretty much the exact same thing then for the height. There we go. And perfect. So now it'll freeze the mouse in the middle of the screen. But so far only in the creation event. So now in the draw event, so that it'll happen a lot more often, I'll place it here as well. But I'm going to check where the mouse is before it freezes it there, right? Because y you've moved it before and like you're, you're moving your mouse and then it puts it back every step is the idea. So we're going to see how far it moved. So let's, let's do play with direction first. So direction yep. There we go. Direction minus equals. Let's see. Display. Get mouse. Get x. There we go. So, but this is how far away it is from zero. So that's no good. So it's got to be minus, and then display get width divided by two. So this will get how far away it is from the middle. Perfect. Also, it's, it's going to be a little bit fast, so to tone that down, we put the entire thing in brackets, and then we go divided by, I don't know, 5. It's, it's, it's my favorite speed. You can change that around just to change the speed of how fast the view will move with the mouse, but this, this is my favorite. So now is where zdir comes into play. We have zdir, so this will be the up and down looking. And then it'll be, instead of X, it'll be Y, because that's up and down. And then height. So once again, it's display mouse get Y minus display get height divided by 2. So this will be how far away the mouse is currently from the middle of the screen. And that whole thing, I guess, divided by 2, because it, it's actually not quite as fast. So, and then we once again set the mouse into the middle of the screen so that we can start it all over again. So now we actually have to transfer direction and zdir into actual positions for our camera to look at. Because once again, we need to have the positions for the camera and then f positions for the camera to look at. So this is where we'll set those. So let's create some new variables. Now these variables will be like local variables, temporary variables. They won't be in the entire game. Like they'll only be for this current step. So they get reset and dumped from memory after this step. So I'm going to create camx, cam 
Y, cam, Z, and then this is the end. Perfect. So this is initializing some new variables. So let's set them. Cam X equals, here's where math comes in, length der X. This, well, it's not too much math, actually. It's converting a direction to a position. So you could do this with cosine and, and whatnot, but r right now we're just going to use length there because it's much easier that they put that in there. So we're going to assume that the camera point we're looking at is 100 pixels away, and the direction, of course, is direction. That's pretty much it. That's all, that's all we have to do. Now, to make it also work, though, you have to do the exact same thing for cam Y. So this will also work. So anyway, it, it converts it to positions. But ah, yes, I forgot. Also, we need to add X plus here. Because otherwise, it would be circling around the zero axis, which would not be good. It has to circle around us, not the zero. So anyway, there we go. And then as for cam Z, uh, right now, it'll just equal Z. Der. Perfect. So now let's actually draw our camera. 3D. No, no, wait. Set projection. There we go. So once again, X, Y, and then I guess 50. That'll be a good height. And then cam X, cam Y, and cam Z. Or plus 50. There we go. So now that'll be equal with my own height. So, and then once again, the last three variables, 0, 0, 1. Perfect. So there we have it. Perfect. Camera looking from me to a position 100 blocks or pixels away from me. And using direction. So direction spinning when my mouse is going from side to side. And then this length to function converts the direction into position. So hope you got that. So now let's actually draw something. So once again, draw set color. See white. Perfect. So now everything will be black. A D3D. Draw floor. Same thing as before. Zero, zero, zero. By room width and room height and once again zero on the floor so this will stretch out the single or the two triangles to the entire um, size of the room texted so <laughs> what it's uh, anyway background get texture text which I'll load in right after this and then I don't know five and five again so there we have it, a room. Now I'll just have to actually load in my texture. Call it text. Load background. Ah, what should it be this time? Oh, it could be a wood floor. There we go. And now I'll add a room. Let's call this room. Nope, not that room. Perfect and add our object into the scene and that's pretty much it so now let's see how that works there we go as we can see I am able to look around perfectly but there's still a few things that we might want to add first we can see the mouse which we don't want to do because we can see it spazzing out in the middle of the screen there and once again, you're going to notice FPS issues just because of the screen recorder. Nothing I can do about that. So let's see here. Yep, yep, definitely want some improvements here. We want to be able to move, and we want no mouse. So let's do that. So, let's see here. Well, first, the best way to remove the mouse is just going to Global Game Settings here. And just deselect the Display the Cursor. Oh yeah, also... You might notice that when you do this, you might accidentally get another window on top of your game, which is disastrous, or horrible. Anyway, it's because the game will still be freezing the mouse, even though you can't exit out of it, because you have no longer selected it. 
So I'm just going to select this one. Let the game window always stay on top. That just removes any any bugs that you're going to have with anything else over top of your game. And that's going to be major league glitching you out. So that helps a lot. Now, all I have to do for actually adding movement is pretty simple, just to move forward. I'm just going to go into step event here, because I like it a bit better, and add movement code again. But this time it'll be a little bit different. So if keyboard check, okay, up, then let's see, SPED equals, I don't know, 5. Because I'm already um, changing my direction to where I'm facing, okay, that means that speed is going to make me go forward. So let's actually reset speed to zero before I call this. That way, if there's none of these keys pressed, then speed will equal zero. See what I did there? So now, I'm going to do the same thing for down, except for it's going to equal minus five. Not hard. It'll go backwards. Except for usually you don't walk as fast backwards as you walk forward. So let's make it three. Now for the left and right, this is where it gets tricky again. <laughs> so let's do once again this, except for let's make it, let's say right. So now we're after going to have to do the length or thing again, because once again, we're going to have to be converting direction to positions because obviously we can't just have it moving speed sideways. It, it just doesn't work like that. So here we go. I'm just going to go, let's see, x plus equals length to x. So let's see here, length, well, how fast do we want it to go? This, this is the speed right here. Let's make it, um, let's make it f uh, 3, because once again, you don't move quite as fast. And then direction will be direction plus 90. This should be to our right. Also, let's put this in brackets that we can also do the exact same thing to y. You always have to do, do <laughs> you always have to do the exact same thing to y so that it'll actually convert both of them. If you just did one of them then it would be weird. So that's all you have to do for that. That that converts it. So remember if you want to change the speed, just change that 3 to whatever you want. Same thing for left here except for this plus 90 part. Instead of plus 90, it has to be minus 90, so that it'll be facing the other way. Where Anyway, so that's the movement code. Let's see if that worked. And, yep, my mouse is gone. I'm not sure the screen recorder might still show it, but on my end, the mouse is gone, which is perfect. So let's see if I can move. Looks like I can. Oh! Unfortunately, I got the left and right backwards. <laughs> when I press the, once again, when I press the left arrow key, I go right. That's not good. Oh well, it's working. I'm able to move around. Let's quickly change that to this one being left and this one being right. There we go. And now it should work. So this is how you make an FPS. Well, my way at least. I find it to be the easiest. Mm. So yeah, this is this is how I do FPSs. Now, um, I'm not going to be providing the download link to this file, um, mainly because this is a tutorial, not an example. So you're you're supposed to be learning from the code and then and then putting it down yourself instead of just downloading a bunch of code and then editing it. So. I know some of my uh, tutorials in the past have been pretty much you just download the code yourself and then edit it around and have fun with that. But no, this this these tutorials are supposed to just um, help teach you. I don't even save these files. I just kind of delete them after I'm done with this. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and hopefully you learned quite a bit from it. So goodbye.